Ah, finally, a lightweight pancake hood you can actually get your hands on. Today we're going to be talking about this lightweight pancake hood, and I'm going to show you how to sand the box to make it fit your face just right. Hoods are definitely a necessity, but you got to have the tools to get the job done also. In case you're just getting started, at the end of this video I'll share with you my list of essential tools for just getting started in this industry. Before we get started, make sure and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I post a new video. YouTube will rarely notify you whenever I post a new video if you only subscribe and not ding the bell. So I've owned lots of welding hoods. This is where I started over here, the sugar scoop. First pancake I ever had was either, it might have been a Sarge's, but I didn't have a Star Sarge's very long. Then I got this Wendy's, then I ran into the Steve Fenton, Empire South. I just recently got this uh, original, the original pancake. I'm a big fan of a lightweight pancake. This here was my favorite for the longest time, the Steve Fenton, but they don't make it anymore. Next is the Empire South. It's very comparable, you know, in weight. They're, they're both extremely comfortable because they're lightweight. Lightweight's a huge deal. It's, it's just more comfortable, right? But you can't get the Steve Fenton no more, so now there's one you can get. The CMR Pancake Hood. Let's go ahead and open it up and see how comparable it is to these others. So, it looks like it's packaged with newspaper. Comes in a box like this. Nice packed. Comes with some sandpaper. I think there's three different types they make. This is the Ultra Light. It's carbon fiber, just like the Empire South, except for it's smooth out here. But it's a smooth finish. Lightweight, definitely lightweight. It seems to be a, I'm going to say comparable, more comparable to this as far as the weight, the Steve Fenton. It's got rivets right here as to where the Steve Fenton has got brass uh, screws. So it looks like it's got rivets. Like I said, a slick finish. If you're a sticker guy, you can put stickers on it. Looks like it's got, it's kind of like a combination between like your Sarge's and your Wendy's. See, the Steve Fenton don't have any brace between the flap and the box, which I personally don't mind. Looks like he's got some support here in between the flap, which is nice, makes it durable. So what I'm seeing so far is it's kind of a combination of a lot of the hoods. It's got good support everywhere, durable, but also lightweight. It's got the clip here. Oh, that's nice. It's got a, a once again, a combination of everything. It's got a clip with the pad. That way it keeps your lens in that is that is way nice there i really like that and it has a, a metal spring which if you guys have seen my lens video i talked about this metal spring a little bit in these pancakes some pancakes come with a plastic spring and they're not near as good they don't stay springy so he's got a metal spring in here that's definitely a plus i want to thank cmr for sending me this so i could unbox it and review it so you can get one of these hoods for $145, I believe, plus shipping, but it comes with everything. You know, your strap, your lens keeper. I do believe it takes about two weeks to get your hood, though. So I'm, I'm definitely liking it so far. All right, now I'm fixing to show you how I sand all my pancake hoods. Let me know in the comments if you've ever sanded a new pancake hood. It comes with a piece of sandpaper and a couple of stickers, or a sticker and a business card. So you're gonna, you're gonna want that sandpaper and then uh, maybe a file. I wanna show you guys what a uh, used pancake looks like compared to the new, how the box looks. Brand or new. It's most likely not gonna fit your face, depending on how your face is, everybody's different. So the first thing you wanna do is put your welding cap on and your glasses, if you wear glasses, anything that you're actually gonna wear out in the field, you wanna put it on and then go ahead and fit your strap to your head the right amount of pressure and then go ahead and uh oh one thing i'm noticing right off the bat this box is already rubbing my glasses i don't know that i've ever actually tried to put tom waters directly underneath a brand new hood but this hood is it's already too narrow this way yeah see but that's not a big deal because i'll i'll end up taking all this out so yeah i can't wear these yet so anyway i know i gotta sand here and here but anyway what you want to do is put the pancake hood on your head and you'll instantly feel pressure points most likely. I've got a square head so I get pressure points right here and I've got a big old nose so I usually get pressure right in here. That's what I've got this for. For those of you that are like me and you've got a big nose, this round file is going to be super handy to sand in the nose area. But before I get to the nose, I've got a lot of sanding to do right here on the edges. 
Get my handy dandy sandpaper. Start sanding. Another thing you're gonna wanna have on hand whenever sanding is either compressed air or if you're sitting at work and all you have is compressed oxygen, you can use oxygen. Sand a little bit. It helps if I turn on the bottle. Spray a little bit. Spray all that dust, spray all that sawdust out of the box so that way it doesn't get in your eyes. I do recommend fitting it without a lens in. It's just another area for sawdust to get out. So compressed air, piece of sandpaper, and a file. And one thing you might need if you have a lot of sanding to do, like right here on the edges, is a grinder. But before you freak out, I've only used the grinder a couple of times on the last two. Like I used it on this one. I remember I might have used it on this, but I definitely used it on this one. But if you use a grinder, this is very important, make sure you've got a used sanding disc and be ever, ever so gentle. I reckon a guy could use a Dremel tool or a, you know, like air tools to get less RPMs or, or whatever, you know, to not be as aggressive. But if you're using something that's mechanical, motorized, be ever so gentle because this is balsa wood. It's very, very soft. Sandpaper will do the majority of the work, but like I said, depending on how your face is and how it's fitting, you might have to do a lot of sanding. So you can use a grinder, just be very, very gentle. See, not so bad. Just be gentle. I don't want y'all to mess up your brand new welding hood. You can definitely do it all with sandpaper. So yeah, see I still got a lot of sanding to do right here. I'm getting a lot of pressure right in here on my temple. So I had a comment on Instagram the other day. Somebody asked, where do you want the pancake to sit, like on your face, because they were having trouble fitting it. Um, I never thought about that, so thank you for asking. I got to thinking like, put this hood on and I look. It's another reason you want to fit it without the lens in it. Is so you can like look in a mirror. And see, I got to thinking like, depending on how I look at you guys, my eyes aren't directly centered. See, I thought they were centered or if I angle down a little bit, it looks like they're centered. So, so it might be centered, but the main deal about fitting a pancake is sanding down all the high spots. Anywhere there's a pressure point, sand it down. It's funny because fitting a pancake is just like the branch test. Very, very similar, the, the same idea. When you're fitting a branch, the, the main thing that you're focused on is anywhere the pipe's touching each other, that's where you wanna sand. It's the same thing when fitting a pancake. Anywhere that it's touching, that's where you wanna sand. You sand down the high spots, same with branch. So we're getting some branch tips in this video also. Another thing that I've done to fit a pancake is use a flashlight. You can put a weld lens in, that way it's dark, Put it down on your face and then shine a flashlight up here. And then if you see any daylight inside, you know there's still, cause sometimes, sometimes the hardest part and where a lot of sparks get, get in is right here on your head. If you got a square head like I do, there'll be a gap right here and you can't see it, right? I mean, if you have somebody with you, your helper or your welder or whatever, you can tell them to look, see if there's any gap. But if there is, you'll know it by shining that flashlight if you're fitting it by yourself. So shine the flashlight here and shine it underneath here and you can see where the light is seeping through. Another tip that I have is fitting a pancake during the summer or in a warm climate to where you're gonna sweat. That sweat will actually soften this wood and this will, the, whenever you work in it, it will actually, you know, fit to your face better. So better yet, it's a good time to wear a new pancake that you've already fit to your face. Wear it during the summer whenever you're sweating because it'll, it'll get this wood kind of soft and it'll mold to your face that much better. All right, let's go ahead and keep sanding on this. Let me get my coffee out of the road. Got my coffee over here. I'm gonna get sawdust in it if I'm not careful. <laughs> yeah, I think I already did. So like I said, I'm getting real bad pressure right here in the corners, so I'm gonna go ahead and sand it some more. if y'all can see but the sandpaper is actually it will sand this boss of wood real like take a lot of wood off in fact I recommend using sandpaper on your first pancake that you've ever fit just that way you don't take out too much I've sanded a little bit and I'm gonna blow it out and fit it on again 
still a lot of pressure right here. And you guys are probably seeing a gap right here. Yep, I can feel the gap. And this hood actually fits my nose better than a lot of them. Oh yeah, getting better and better. Can y'all tell if I'm smiling or not? That wore out sanding pad is not near as aggressive as a new one. The last time I done this on that other hood, it must have been a brand new sanding pad because this one I'm actually having to get down on it. But either way, still be careful. Sand and blow. Sometimes you can push on it like this. So you can really tell where them fine points are. I still got a gap up here. The very first hood that you ever sand, it's a good idea to sand a little and check it. Do that more often until you sand a couple of welding hoods and you know exactly, or not exactly, but you have more of an idea of how much you need to take off in certain spots. Like I knew I was safe to take off all this because I've had to do a lot of sanding on the edges on all of my pancakes. Just that experience of sanding several. But at first, sand a little bit, check it, make sure you're not taking too much out. Because same thing with the branch, if you take too much out, then you just create a gap right there. Then you gotta sand everything else back down, if that makes sense. Let me know if that makes sense in the comments. I still got a gap up here. I hold my fingers on it so I know exactly where, okay. So I'm gonna sand right there and right there, okay, all right. Half the battle to being a good welder is being a good fitter. The better your fit, the easier it is to make a good weld. A little welding tip right here in the fitting of a pancake hood. I'm a firm believer in good preparation. I've heard from some good tie-in men. They've always said, plan your work and work your plan. What I get out of that is have a plan. Put a decent amount of time into your plan and it makes your job a lot easier. Work your plan. Same here. Take your time and get it fitting good. We're not gonna weld this, but like on your branch, take your time getting it fitting good. Take more time in the prep and the welding goes that much faster and that much easier. I'm gonna go ahead and take out a little, take out these couple of burrs right here in the nose. Kind of smooth it up. You can always fold the sandpaper to get down in your nose. I always like to kind of bevel this right here. That way it's not cutting your cheeks. It's comfortable on your cheeks. Oh man, it's getting better and better. Less gap should be right there. Still a little gap. Let me get that fitting right, but I'm still feeling a lot of pressure right here on the on my temples right here. Give it a little press. Make sure it's snug. Move your face around. Make sure it's seated in good, you know. That way you know exactly where your pressure points are and where you need to take some more out. When it comes to finishing it up, like fine tuning it, you definitely don't want to fine tune it with the grinder. Just wanted to throw that in there. Constant reminder to be easy with the grinder. This fit in a pancake takes, takes a lot of patience, but it's worth it in the end. Welding takes a lot of patience, so it's actually good. It's good for, for us, for you, to sand on a pancake. You know, it's kind of an art, and that's kind of what welding is. You know, you want to be patient and precise. You know, you, you want to be fluent. A guy once told me, you want to have vanesse as a welder, you know? So that's what we're looking for here. All right, okay. Oh man, you'll know it whenever the pressure points are gone because you'll put it down on your face and you literally will not feel them. It will not hurt. I tell you what, that right there is a pretty good fit. I'm gonna put my hand over this instead of a dark lens and I'm gonna shine a light up here and shine a light down here. I don't see anything. That is uh, pretty comfortable right there. The bottom of this box actually fit my face real well, which is which is unusual. Most of my boxes I have to sand the nose pretty good, but this one literally is all sealed right in here. All right, I think I'm gonna call that good. There's a link in the description where you can get your list of essential tools needed for starting out as a pipeline welder. Just click on the link, punch in your email, and I'll send it right over to you. Like this video if you liked it, and don't forget to tell me below if you've ever sanded a new pancake hood. Feel free to share your tips also. Subscribe and ding the bell for notifications when I post a new video every Friday. And I wanted to thank CMR one last time for sending me this hood. It's greatly appreciated. My tip for this week is get comfortable before you make a weld. That is one of the most important things to do to making a good quality weld is get as comfortable 
as you can. You may not always be able to get the most comfortable out in the real world, but get as comfortable as you can, and that includes getting a pancake hood to fit your face just right. So get comfortable. Thanks for watching this video. Learn something every day, and we'll see you next Friday.